y'all ever have something that you're super excited about, but you have to be like super secret about it because, you know, you can't tell anybody or whatever. That's how I felt for about the last month. And uh, it's got everything to do with this little guy right here, the Beacon Mic from Beacon. Now, first off, I want to get this out of the way. Beacon sent this over to me early to review and uh, to kind of help beta test and do things with it. I'm doing a review video. I didn't have to do a review video. Um, I didn't pay for it. They did send it, so I didn't want to get that out there. Uh, but they don't expect anything from me, and they have no control over the video. Um, they just want me to share my thoughts, whether they're good or bad. Guess what? They're pretty damn good. So this video is gonna be all about the Beacon mic and the software that comes with the mic. If you wanna see an unboxing, I already did a video, you can check that out right there. So let's jump into it. And hey, if you like the video, make sure you give it a like. It helps me out a ton and hit the subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. So what do I think about the microphone? Well, if it tells you anything, I got this microphone. I hooked it up. I plugged it in with uh, the Mix Create, which is another product. I have another video on. You should check out right after this one. Uh, and when I did that, I unplugged my GoXLR Mini and I unplugged my Rode Procaster and I'm giving them to my buddy now. That's what I think about this microphone. Uh, I've been pleasantly surprised. The first thing I want to get out there and talk about is that it's USB and what common misconceptions a lot of people have. So a lot of people think USB microphone and they think that's not as good as an XLR microphone. Even the best USB microphones aren't as good, right? It's false. No way. Not this time. You know, uh, an Elgato Wave 3 uh, doesn't really compare to a Rode Procaster or an RE20. Or, or our buddy that we put on the pedestal, the Shure SM7B, which by the way, it's on the pedestal for a reason. It's pretty much one of the greatest mics ever made. I mean, Michael Jackson used it for Thriller. Shamon. Anyways, USB microphones can be great. A lot of times they're not because they're entry level microphones. They're cheap, they use cheap products. They don't spend the money, but that's okay because not everybody uh, needs to spend a bunch of money. Maybe someone just needs a microphone uh, because they work from home now and they're on Zoom calls. Uh, I mean, I'm going to use this for my work from home, but I also do other stuff like make YouTube videos on this channel and uh, stream on this channel and sometimes Twitch. Links in the description. Anywho, USB versus XLR. Let's answer this question right now. How do you plug your XLR microphone into your computer? Do you take the XLR and put it into the XLR input in the back of your motherboard? I didn't think so, because it doesn't exist. All right, no. You take your XLR microphone, you plug it into your GoXLR or whatever uh, audio interface you're using, and then you plug that into your computer with what? A USB cable. So the first thing that we gotta get rid of is this idea of USB bad, XLR good, because at the end of the day, they all go through a USB cord into your computer. This microphone, it's a broadcast dynamic microphone, um, like a Shure SM7B, which, hey, it's kind of looks like it, with the exception of this pretty cool RGB ring. But why does it look like it? Because it's a cylinder, all right? <laughs> it's, it's a cylinder, it's a microphone. There's only so many ways that you can make them look. And uh, if it's not broke, you know, don't fix it. But it's a lot more than just a USB microphone. It's got a built-in DSP. That's a digital signal processor. That's what your GoXLR has in it that allows you to mess around with your mic chain. Anyways, what Beacon Mic does is it gives users access to various voice plugins that normally require hundreds of dollars of software. So this microphone is essentially your microphone, your nice broadcast dynamic microphone, and it's your GoXLR software all built into one. So let's take a look at the software real quick because that's what really makes this thing shine in my opinion. All right, so remember this is pre-release software. The reason I'm saying that, uh, I haven't really experienced any bugs. Uh, maybe like a one or two little crashes on pre-release software, uh, but you know, 
it's been updated so many times since I've been testing it. Uh, it's extremely stable right now, in my opinion. Uh, the reason I bring up that it's pre-release is that um, it may look different. You may have different colors, just little tiny things. So for my first review, which is what this is, uh, my initial review, I'm going to show you the software, but I will do a much bigger deep dive in a few weeks once I've had time to use the release software and uh, really deep dive into this thing. All right, so on this page right here, this is the mic chain that I was talking to you about. I'm not going to go into a lot of things individually, but I do want to hit on some high notes. So if I click here and I go to our mic setup, uh, you'll see in the bottom here, you can see my voice, uh, how loud I am. And on the top, you have the EQ. Uh, there's a couple things you can do that right now with my software. It is either flat or not flat, which I have it on not flat. You can also uh, do an advanced EQ, which I have one there. Um, but just for the sake of this, I'm not going to go too far into it. This does have a DS or built in, uh, which if you are coming from a GoXLR mini, like I am, uh, you don't have a DS or you got to spend the $500 for the big boy GoXLR to get that. Um, and it has a bass enhancer where it's going to do some software, uh, magic basically to make your bass sound a little bit better in your voice, uh, in the exciter, which is that's adding the S's that you took out back in. I know it's a lot. The big thing about this is the adaptive real-time voice suppression. Um, if you've used RTX voice, you kind of have an idea of like what it sounds like, though I think this sounds a lot better. This is using the microphone itself. It's not using that crazy software. If you see the little white thing going right here, the white line, that's my voice right now. And the blue green line right here is the noise floor. Um, it's pretty nice here. Let me just stop talking for a second. Okay, now let me turn off the noise suppression so you can hear what's going on in my room. Oh, let me turn this off too. All right, you hear that? I have a box fan going because it's hot. It's four o'clock in the morning and my computer has made my room about 80 degrees. It's wonderful. We turn on our adaptive noise suppression. This microphone right here listens to my voice over 500 times a second and adjust the noise floor. And it literally just works out of the box. Like I didn't do anything crazy. I literally just flipped this switch on and it just works. That's what you run into with this microphone a lot is that it just works and it works well. Um, an expander that there's a whole bunch of fancy stuff I'll cover in the full review. Consider this a noise gate, so to speak. Has a compressor in it like the GoXLR uh, does in any other mixers. Uh, it's digital. Uh, it works extremely well. I appreciate right here that it shows you uh, how, like, you know, how much makeup gain you need. Uh, you can put your makeup gain to whatever your loudest stuff is right here, and uh, you'll be fine. And then the separate headphones, uh, you can monitor your mic. I'm a huge fan of that. And also, there's an EQ on the headphones. Um, over here, you have amp power. Your headphones plug into the back right there. Right there. Um, my headphones, black cable, that's a white cable. What's up with that? Beacon has been nice enough to include a roughly six foot headphone extension cable that I've just routed down my boom arm. So now I have a, just a little thing on my desk that I plug my headphones into. And uh, these are high impedance headphones. Um, they're the, well, these are the 80 ohm, but these are the Bear Dynamic DT770 Pro. One of the people that is testing as well is using the 250 ohm with zero issue. Uh, the headphone amp inside here is amazing. Um, just like it was in the Go XLR, which, you know, this team created that too. Okay. Last thing I'm going to show you is the mix software. So I'm using a beacon mix create, which is a, uh, an audio controller, so to speak. This is the beacon mix. This is the small guy. The video that I've made comparing these two is live on this channel right now. And you need to go watch it as soon as you're done with this. This is one half of the full puzzle, but here's the great thing. You don't have to buy these. These just make your life easier, but the software comes with the microphone. So here's the software. Uh, you know, there's faders and everything for your mic, your chat, your music, your browser. If you're looking here, they have sub mixes. If you don't know what a sub mix is, uh, if you look down right here in the middle, you have personal mix and audience mix, personal mix. That's what I hear in my headphones, audience mix, 
that's what you hear on my stream or in the video or in my recording um let's take music for example when i play games i like to have my music a little louder but i don't want to blast music out to my stream so i can have my music all the way up but it's only about 75 percent the way up and as i put it down you can see that they're linked together same thing with browser um i've done that Submixing is amazing it allows you to have a personalized experience for yourself but also a personalized experience for your audience um you do not get that on the go xlr you can do submixes, i believe on the elgato products but you can't control them with a controller <laughs> Uh, last thing, if you're watching this video, um, you probably know what a Go XLR is. I hate to keep bringing up a Go XLR, but that's the gold standard, or at least in my opinion, it was uh, until these products launched today. Right down here at the bottom, the routing table looks just like the Go XLR. Personal mix, everything that's going in there, your audience mix, they hear everything. Voice chat mic, so that's like for your communication. Um, things like zoom or discord you know i don't want to put my browser or my music or my game sound to my buds unless they really you know want to know it um but the routing table that in itself is worth hundreds of dollars comes included with the software in this microphone <sighs> okay now that covers what's different about the mic now why do i think you should get one because i believe this is an absolute game changer uh, when the GoXLR and GoXLR Mini came out, they completely changed the broadcast and content creator landscape on what an audio mixer looked like. Everybody was getting a GoXLR or a GoXLR Mini, and it was because of the software and because of the hardware with built-in preamps, you know, not having to, you know, buy a cloud lifter for your SM7B, all of that stuff. I mean, they were absolutely great products. They're still amazing, great products. $500 for a GoXLR. GoXLR Mini is $250. On top of that, you're going to need to plug in a decent microphone, which is going to cost you $200 plus. Uh, my setup, I have a GoXLR Mini and a Rode Procaster. That is, I think, kind of bare bones into getting a great professional sound. Uh, and that's $500 for all of that. This is $279. And everything about this microphone, in my opinion, is slightly better everything about the software is definitely better having submixes goxlar doesn't have submixes i mean it's i'm not trying to like throw different names out there and compare because this is totally different than anything but it really is like you got yourself a great dynamic microphone and then you took a go xlr and then you smushed it together and then sprinkled in the elgato wave software or wavelink software whatever it's called um the software that works for the wave mics and this is what comes up with it this is what your streaming microphone should look like in 2022 it's what my streaming microphone looks like in 2022 i really i i like i need to let you guys know i feel like a shill but i'm really trying hard not to it's just the thing's so damn good it's so damn good and it's half the cost of entry to getting a sound and controlled stream like you would get with the gold standard set before a good xlr microphone and a go xlr mini at minimum um i think if you're in the if you're in the market for a microphone this should be where you really look it sounds great uh I, it looks great um in the software nothing compares to it so i hope i was able to help you out that's my first review on this microphone um i'll let you know how i feel about it in a couple weeks when i get my full review out but i don't think much is going to change i've been using it and uh i keep getting surprised by things that i didn't know that i needed that this offers that i'd never been offered before so Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure right now, go check out the Mix and Mix Create video. It's also uploaded on my channel right now. It's a live video. Go check it out because as great as this is and as game changing as this is for the microphone game, the Mix and Mix Create are completely game changing for how you use audio on your system. I think the Mix Create, every streamer could have one. 
I think the Beacon Mix, everybody who has a PC should have one. Anyways, it's been fun. Strong Quattro. Catch you in the next video. Oh,